Hey there, welcome to Pops and Pylons. Let's talk a little bit about the new achievements in the upcoming Golden Century expansion for Yubra Inversalis 4. Now, as always, there's going to be 10 achievements in the expansion, and a bunch of them are going to be about highlighting new mechanics, but then there are also going to be some that are quite difficult and quite challenging for us to maybe attempt here on this channel. And one of the goals of this video, or these types of videos, is always that I want to let you guys know about the new achievements, but also that I would really like your input on what achievements you would like to see me do. And with the new expansion, there's always sort of a desire in me to do one of the new achievements. So if you'd like any of these uh, upcoming ones, then why don't we go ahead and talk about that in the comment section. Now, let's just jump right in. Um, start with Trophy Hunter, Capture an Enemy Flagship. This is one of the ones, that, as I said, that's made to highlight a new mechanic. There's a new mechanic in the upcoming expansion, that's flagships. Uh, nations can now build flagships for an ex increased price, have one more powerful ship that gives certain buffs to your navy, or maybe even, um, yeah, well, to navy-related things. Let's put it that way. And uh, if you capture one of those, then you get the Trophy Hunter achievement. If you don't know about the new um, features in the expansion, then I've made a video about that where I talk, uh, put a link up here somewhere, um, where I talk about that in detail, and there are other things on the internet too. But do check out my video if you're so interested. So, flagships, you can have them, you can capture them. As an achievement to go for, this is pretty eh, lame because it's quite random whether you can actually capture an enemy flagship. Not only do you have to have an enemy that has a flagship, that then uses that flagship in battle against you. You have to win that battle, and then you have to capture ships in that battle, and then one of those capture ships actually has to be the flagship. So you must not sink it, it must be one of the random ones that gets chosen to be captured and all that. That's a lot of ifs. So you're gonna get these achievements eventually if you play a lot, because at some point it's gonna happen, but it's really not something I would like to go for, I don't think. And there's, you get a new home, and 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 you get the drill. Um, <laughs> obvious op opera um, reference here. Uh, expel five different minorities to your colon colonies. Another highlight sort of achievement. Expel minorities, new feature where we can, well, convert a province in our home country to our religion and our culture, and at the same time move the foreign culture that was there and the weird heretic religion or whatever was in there over to the new world. We have to expel that, do that five times. I don't know um, what exactly they're going to mean by five different minorities. Does it mean five different cultures, five different religions, five different religion culture combinations? So can I expel two people of the same religion but different culture and that counts as different minorities? We don't know yet. But essentially you're going to have to press that button a lot and then you get the achievement. Which, sure. Um, again, as one of those highlighting achievements, it's not particularly interesting as a goal for a campaign, but it could be a nice addition to one, maybe. <laughs> and then, why is the rum gone? That is another reference, obviously parts of the Caribbean. Um, as Asturias established an order in rum. Rum is a state in the Ottomans. Holy orders are a new mechanic also in the expansion, uh, where we can give certain buffs to states by assigning holy orders to them. And Asturias is a newly, newly releasable nation in, I believe it should be Castile. Definitely in Iberia and it should be releasable from Castile. A uh, small, probably one province minor, maybe two provinces, but I assume it's going to be one province minor. As it's new, I don't really know. Now this could make for somewhat of an interesting campaign. I mean, Asturias is probably not the easiest of all stars, although Iberia has a bunch of small nation stars that it could do, so Asturias is just one more. We could do Navarra, for example, or Granada. Um, for something else, and then you have to grow and, well, probably take over Iberia, become powerful, fight the Ottomans, take rum, and then assign it to an order and be done. Alright? I don't quite get why this achievement is the way it is. I mean, I get that I get that they want to do something with rum in a pirate-themed expansion, sure, and that, obviously, the jump to rum, uh, the uh, province, or even the um, empire, is pretty easy. Uh, then. They want people to establish holy orders, so highlight this feature. And Asturias is one of the new re re newly releasable nations, so highlighting that is interesting too. But why this combination? I don't know. I just don't know. The League of Maya Pan, setting Huastec for Maya. So Huastec, one of the new tags in um, Mesoamerica, so Flower Wars, all that, right near to the Aztecs. And um, well, essentially you have to grow and form the Mayan nation, which is 
a very natural sort of progression from starting there. So this is just sort of a suggested start. If you want to go for uh, Flower Wars Aztec style gameplay, why not start as the new horse deck and uh, then go for forming that Maya. And that can all be done before the Europeans arrive, I'm sure, um, so you don't have to have that annoying waiting period for the arriving Europeans. I don't think that's super difficult or anything. Yes, you have to participate in the Flower Wars, and I assume Huastec is probably going to be one of the smaller nations there, so that's going to make it a bit harder. Um, but the Flower Wars are not, not the hardest thing I've ever done in this game. So, yeah, it's just, just a good, interesting, fair start, I think. And uh, again, you don't have to deal with the Europeans if you just go for this achievement and don't want to go any further. Yarhar, uh, a is life for me. Choose to play as New Provenance and conquer all of Caribbeans. Okay, first of all, before we go into the details, two things here. Conquer all of Caribbeans, conquer all of the Caribbean, maybe? Oh no, there seems to be some, some grammar issue here. But what's more interesting is choose to play as. All these achievements usually say, look at um, why is rum gone? Uh, we have as Asturias do something. And sometimes you have starting as, we go down here, starting as awfully do something. But choose to play as, that's new wording. I don't know if this is just worded for somebody who didn't know the usual templating or if this has some sort of meaning. Um, the other thing is new provenance, that's the Bahamas. And I don't think the Bahamas should be colonized in the 1444 start. Um, they're definitely not right now, but I assume they're not going to be even in the expansion. So if you want to choose to play as New Provenance, there are two ways, I assume. Um, well, maybe just one. Uh, and the, the obvious-ish one is to choose a later start date, which is not something I really do very often, but I guess you do that because you want to do so, the whole um, Pirates of the Caribbean thing. Uh, and... New Providence, uh, you need that to be colonized and that's on the later start date. So maybe that's how you do it. Uh, I thought about whether you could maybe release it and then play as, and that counts as choose to play. But I don't think you can release subjects from colonial nations. And maybe you just conquer, or you just colonize New Providence, then you don't get a colonial nation because you don't have five provinces yet. And then you release it as a subject, then you choose to play as. Maybe that works. No. Um, so either later start date or maybe some sort of releasing shenanigans. And then conquer all of the Caribbean. It's just... It's to highlight the new Pirate Republic feature, of course. And... Conquer all of the Caribbean is just a... Just a generic goal that's attached to that. I would be super interested in doing a pirate campaign, so if you, if you have any ideas, please talk to me in the comments about that. Um, it would be great. We could do a nice and interesting pirate campaign, but I don't think just, just conquering all of the Caribbean or lobbying a lot is a really piratey achievement. I want something else. I want something nice and piratey. If you have ideas, put them in that comment section, please. Please, I really want to do it. Um, I even tried to get a pirate accent, even though I'm horrible at accents, and <laughs> definitely at pirate accents. Yarhar! I don't know. Forever Golden. Complete the Spanish mission tree. Simple, easy, um, well, I don't know how easy the Spanish mission tree is going to be. It's going to be something about, um, well, forming Spain, so um, consolidating Iberia and then doing a bunch of colonization and all that. It's definitely going to be part of that. I don't know if there are any really difficult parts in the Spanish military. There might be. Um, I don't know. But in general, it's like the Mawar campaign where we do. It just highlights an area, highlights this new mission tree, uh, and gives you something to do when you decide to try out this new immersion pack uh, that we have here. Spanish fly. Start as awfully secure personal union over an Iberian nation. Okay, Afili is a one province minor in, um, not Italy, Ireland, that's what I want to say, in Ireland. And so you have to start as those people and then get that personal union of an Iberian nation that could be somebody small like Navarra. Um, so maybe you can even do this really quickly, I don't know. Um, start as Afili, grow a tiny bit, get an alliance and uh, oh, a marriage to Navarra and then get lucky. Um, because personal union mechanics are random in their nature. Um, you need the other person to die, the other king or queen to die, without an heir. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. And then there's some sort of prestige ranking in who of the married people gets to fight over the personal union. So you need to... I think that's how that works. Um, but so you need to marry them and then get lucky, essentially. 
And you could just try April. Just play in Ireland, grow and grow and grow, try to marry all the Iberians and grab one of those personal unions when they happen. Um, but I don't think there should be <laughs> any sort of scripted personal union between um, Offaly and the Iberians. So, yeah, this is just... You could just gonna sit on randomness there for a while and then maybe get it at some point. If you're new to the game, Ireland is a great starting spot. It's really easy to an easy start and nice to learn all the mechanics. Um, so if you're new to the game and you're wanting to go for an achievement anyway, then I could see going for the Spanish fly thing. Start as awfully and then maybe maybe get that, maybe not. Um, focus on learning the game, focus on expanding the island and stuff, fighting the English, and um, then maybe get that achievement. Also, if you have any idea why Spanish fly and why awfully, um, what that is about, tell me in the comments. I don't get the, the reference here at all. Where am I? As a new world nation, uh, a native. As a new world native with the random new world active, explore the entire new world. That's a lot of new worlds in one sentence. Um, random new world is a feature I've actually never used, um, but it's been a feature in the, I don't know if it's, it's probably a DLC feature from way back when, um, but I don't, I don't know if that's actually true. Um, but you can randomize the new world. So instead of having all the provinces where they're supposed to be, uh, I think it keeps the provinces, but all the um, individual natives and stuff uh, where they're supposed to be, instead the world is going to be random and uh, have a new random layout. And there's going to be fog of war, so you don't actually get to see stuff before you explore it. This is funny to me because it sort of takes EU4, which is a grand strategy game, which is all about um, politics between neighboring states and you know who's where and diplomacy from the start. Uh, as opposed to something like Civilization, which is more of a 4X game, where you start alone in nowhere, and then you expand at some point, you meet different people. If you do this, place a native in the random new world, um, then you get sort of the Civilization experience, I think. Um, you get to start somewhere in the middle of nowhere, uh, and expand from there, and then meet your neighbors and explore around from that. Which, <laughs> I don't play EU4 for that, but it's funny if they can actually pull that off and actually get some sort of 4 axes type gameplay in this. Um, clearly you could have done this before as well. Um, this achievement doesn't make it possible now or anything, but maybe highlights a gameplay style that I haven't thought about at all. So maybe I'm gonna give that a go at some point. And then we can finally go for... Finally, there's a pun here. Um, the other ones, I mean, maybe, maybe Spanish Fly is some sort of pun too, with awfully, 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 offly, I don't know. Um, but Basque and Glory is an obvious pun. Um, Starting in Navarra ensure that most of Iberia is Basque culture before the age of absolutism. I don't know what most is going to mean here. Most of Iberia. Uh, we're going to have to wait for the game to come out to actually see what the conditions really are. Um, but clearly we have to start as Navarra, which is a difficult start. Um, you're very small, you're landlocked, and uh, you have big annoying neighbors. Uh, you have to conquer most of Iberia because for culture conversion to work you have to actually own the land not just uh, you know force convert people or something like we're doing with the religion in the paper campaign no you actually have to own the stuff and convert it um, maybe you can get a subject that's of Basque culture and then they will convert for you but that's difficult to do as well to get a Basque subject so yeah I think mostly you will just have to go and conquer Iberia and then convert it and do it quickly by 1610 1612 ish because the Age of Absolutism starts about then. Or do what we did in our Kale campaign and uh, just prevent the Age of Absolutism, from, just prevent the Age of Absolutism from spawning at all um, by preventing global trade from spawning. Um, now, I don't know if Navarra is in the Sevilla trade node. I would assume so, but maybe they are up in the French one. I don't know if it's a Champagne or... No, there's a... There's a water-based one. I don't know what the, the node left of Champagne is called. But if Navarra is in that trade node, then what you could do is expand into Iberia, which is mostly the Sevilla trade node, become the most powerful power in the Sevilla trade node, make Sevilla the most powerful node in the world, which is not trivial, not at all. It's also not easy to steer things there. Um, but if you're colonizing, it makes it a bit easier. Um, and then not have your capital there, because it would be in that other trade node, and not have level two or level three cent of trade. So that would be doable. If Navarra is in the Sevilla trade node, you probably have to move your capital, which sounds annoying. Um, but that is certainly a possibility. As we saw in the Kale campaign, it's definitely a possibility to um, delay the spawn or prevent the spawn of the age um, if that timing is too harsh for you. But I think this could be doable. Just the, con just the conquest of Iberia um, by 1610 is definitely doable. 
And I don't know if you're gonna have time for all the culture conversions by that, but it's definitely something we're gonna try, I think. And finally, an unlikely candidate, starting is Mazar, Togor, or Jared, um, reform Al Andalus. So, Al Andalus is the Muslim uh, Iberian Empire that you can form. And uh, Togor is definitely a North African tag. I assume Mizab and Jared are as well, probably very small ones. Uh, there's been a bunch of re um, rebuilding, um, redesign of North Africa, um, so I don't quite know how it looks right now. But I assume these are both um, very, or three very small tags to start as in North Africa, and then you have to make your way into Iberia and reform Al Andalus. Um, this is very similar, I would say, to the uh, Re Reconquista achievement where you have to take Iberia as Granada, which is also um, a Muslim nation, and, but instead of starting as Granada you start as one of those North African uh, people. So not uninteresting, a um, bit too similar to an existing achievement for my taste, um, but it is definitely something that's going to be not, not trivial to do either. Maybe it's made a bit easier, maybe it's a bit easier than the Re Reconquista because you don't start right next. Um, to Castile and Aragon and Portugal and they're just getting beaten up immediately on. Maybe. Alright, so that's 10 achievements. Um, we have Trophy Hunter, you get a new home, you get a new home, why is the rum gone, the League of Mojapan, Yarhara, it's a pride life for me, um, Forever Golden, Spanish Fly, Where Am I, and Bask in Glory, and finally an unlikely candidate. And um, of course, I would really like to know in the comment section whether you guys are interested in any of these achievements to be done as um, full runs here on the on the channel, of course. Or maybe if you have any ideas how we can combine these with some other achievements, some old achievements, um, to make for more interesting comments. Tell me all about that in that comment section. Also, do, do tell me if you have an idea for a good pirate run. I would so love to do one and I just don't have a good idea. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, you know what to do. There's a like button below the video. There's a subscribe button that, if you're not subscribed, hey, do subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you're new to this channel, I do a lot of EU4 Let's Plays, um, achievement runs, long running campaigns. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, definitely hit that subscribe button. And of course, I do update videos like these about news in the EU4 universe. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.